Hi. Today we will briefly talk on a recent paper entitled Long-Term Outcomes and Prognostic Factors for Survival of Patients with NK-Associated Vasculitis, which was published by NDT. I am Shafak Miroğlu, a YMP board, board member of the ERA. Uh, we have Dr. Beatrice Sanchez Alamo, who is the lead author of this paper and also a former board, board member of YMP, and Dr. Andreas Krombickler, who is an expert on AAV and also a YMP board member. Welcome both. Thank you, Safak. It's a pleasure to be here today. So let's start with our questions with the paper. Um, you know, uh, there are a lot of previous data on the mortality and morbidity rates in anchor associated vasculitis, but uh, it is still striking to see uh, these results on your paper. So how do you interpret your findings? Yeah, thanks for your question. Yeah, it's quite amazing to see that the vasculitis still have such an increased mortality. But uh, we know that vasculitis, when it is associated with kidney disease, uh, they have the higher mortality rates. And in our cohort, uh, patients had 24% uh, of the patients had uh, severe kidney disease. So our results uh, should be interpreted in this context. Even if the mortality is still high, uh, we have found some promising results uh, when we split it the cohort into periods like 1995 until 1999, and then another period uh, from, uh, two, from the year 2000 onwards, we could see that the mortality of those patients recruited during the last years uh, and had a better survival. So it's quite uh, promising. So Bea, it's it's great to see this published finally because um the presentation at the ERA last year was really extraordinary and it's really nice to see you know progress in the field, but again as as Shafak mentioned it's quite um devastating to see the high mortality rates. So one of the intriguing um factors you identified was low platelet counts and. Usually active disease is associated with, with high platelet count thrombocytosis. So did you measure the platelets during follow-up of the patients? Or what was the, the cutoff for low platelets um, for this particular investigation? Uh, yeah, thanks for the question. Yeah, it was quite intriguing, but uh, it was a long time ago published by my mentor, Justin Besman, that those patients with a lower platelet count uh, seem to have a, a worse prognosis. So uh, we uh, took that um, result and tried to, to figure out if our patients had the same results. And we use a, a platelet count of uh, 250. And uh, we could see that uh, those patients with a uh, higher platelet count uh, had better survival. Uh, it is not uh, still known which are the which are the role that platelets uh, play in the disease, but uh, we could know that uh, since uh, vasculitis had a vascular damage, uh, but platelets might be the first responders in vascular injury and endothelial damage. But platelets, we know that also play a role as inflammatory effector cells. Uh, recently, it was published that platelets um, might activate the alternative complement pathway. So it could be one of one explanation. Another explanation might be that um, it is known that in the kidney biopsies, in some of them, there are um, some uh, thrombotic microangiopathy. And we know that those patients with thrombotic microangiopathy and vasculitis seems to have a worse prognosis and a lower um, survival. So that could be another explanation for that. The original population of your paper, your research, uh, came from seven uvas sponsored clinical trials, uh, starting with MEPEX. Um, so do you have any reservations about the representation of real world data? And it seems logical that these patients with the most severe presentation from uh, the MEPEX trial have the highest mortality rates among these, among the patients of all trials. Uh, would you suggest a more specific approach to reduce mortality in such patients, such as 
anti-infective prophylaxis or further cardiovascular workup? Yeah, uh, thanks for the question. As you mentioned, our patients were selected from seven different RCTs. So that could be a bias uh, since patients with the higher comorbidities are not usually included in these RCTs. And, and also what is more important, these patients were recruited from highly specialized centers from all over Europe. So that could be a bias as well. Uh, but it is also important to note that uh, these patients were really under very strict protocols. So it's also very valuable information for us. Um, as you know, our, our study, as we mentioned before, patients were included with very severe kidney disease, especially those patients from the MIPEX trial. And this could be an overestimation of the mortality rates from the whole spectrum of AAB patients. And coming back to infections and cardiovascular disease that you mentioned in your last questions, uh, we know that infections are a major cause of mortality in our patients, and therefore strategies such as, for example, a cotrimoxazole for the prophylaxis of opportunistic infections might be a good strategy for our patients, since they have demonstrated that um, it is it is saving lives indeed. Um, moreover, uh, there are also studies now um, aiming for a reduction in the esterase dose, such as, for example, the LOVAS trials or new um, uh, new drugs such as abacopan, which promising results that also um, helps to reduce esterates. And finally, regarding cardiovascular disease, I was reading today data that a third of the patients with AAV doesn't have a uh, low lipid lower in treatment so it's quite impressive to see that and also i read that uh, a third of the patients with aav doesn't have an optimal um blood pressure control so we need to put our efforts on that yeah i certainly agree with that that's a, a very valid point i think we need to control cardiovascular disease more aggressively so Bea, most of the patients were recruited in the in the late 90s, early 2000s, so to say, um, and, and most of them received cyclophosphamide and azathioprine. So do you think, you know, especially considering the malignancy risk, that in a more contemporary cohort that uh, um, the rates of, you know, end-stage kidney disease and, and also uh, mortality are reduced nowadays and the prognosis is better? Yeah, uh, that might be the case. Uh, we are now working on that. Uh, this is the next step of our project from the long-term follow-up of the UVAS patients. Uh, we would like to raise concerns, especially about the risk of non-melanoma skin cancer. As you mentioned before, our patients were uh, treated, especially with cyclophosphamide, more, most of them, like uh, the majority of them. And we know for previous studies that uh, there is an increased risk of uh, bladder cancer, leukemia, and non melanoma skin cancer, as I mentioned before. And when there are other studies that compare the use of rituximab and cyclophosphamide, and we could observe that patients treated with rituximab, if you compare that risk of cancer with the general population, we could observe that it's not when, when patients are treated with rituximab, there is an in, not an increased risk of cancer. Unfortunately, uh, there is only a minority of patients from the Redux trial that were included in our cohort. Uh, so our results uh, are not um, enough strong to demonstrate that. And we could not extract like definite conclusions. Thanks you for these answers for your paper, Bia. Uh, now, we both know you personally, but for our audience, can you briefly tell us where you currently work, what your main interests in nephrology are, and what has driven you to clinical research? Well, um, well, these are the easiest questions now. <laughs> I'm a Spanish nephrology. I'm from Madrid, and I'm currently working at a hospital called, called Hospital Universitario del Sureste. Uh, my main areas of interest are clinical nephrology and especially glomerulonephritis and autoimmune diseases, uh, of course, vasculitis. Um, I liked research since I was a kid. Um, I think it's a, a good way to help patients beyond clinic 
uh, during my training in nephrology, I did a master in statistics, so I could learn the basis of research. Then uh, when I finished my training, I asked for a grant from the European Renal Association uh, to do a, a, a fellowship in Sweden. It was a research fellowship, and I spent there a couple of years uh, studying vasculitis and in this project of the long-term follow-up of patients with uh, vasculitis, in included in the U.S. trials. And there I met Justin Besman, who was my mentor, and I would like to, to thank her for all her support that was really important for this research. And what do you like to do outside of work? Well, even if medicine takes a lot of time, the clinic and so, uh, in my free time, I love hiking in the nature, dancing, and the most important, spending my spare time with my friends and loved ones. Andreas, do you have anything to add? No, I think that's a, a shared passion is anchor vasculitis and hiking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like lupus nephritis more, but I agree with you. Yeah, it's much more complex. So anchor vasculitis is uh, much more homogeneous, I think. <laughs> yeah. Easier. <laughs> well, you can, you know, there are still many things to know about lupus nephritis as well. So, <laughs> yeah, This was great. And this is the first uh, online first video questions and answers session for the YMP. I hope, I hope this went well and I hope uh, the ones coming will go well. Thanks a lot.